So I'd like to go through a little discussion example that illustrates how the five-step revenue model can actually be applied in practice. It's a very simple example, but it will help you understand the core principles of the five-step revenue model. So we have here a two-year contract with a free handset, okay? So an iPhone 4S and network services, which consists of 200 minutes, 200 megabytes, and 200 SMSs, which the customer will pay a monthly fee of 300 rands per month. The iPhone 4S without the minutes sells for a cash price of 5,000 Rand and a 200 deal, okay, which is basically the network services of minutes, megabytes and SMSs, sells for 200 Rand per month without a handset. And the question is, how will revenue be recognized in terms of if it's 15? So the first question to ask is, is there a contract? Okay, so in this situation, let's assume that there is. They've got a contract with the customer, let's say for example, it's sell C. They've done their credit checks and are happy that, you know, the customer will be willing and able to pay the monthly amount. Okay, so we're happy that it's a contract, there's enforceable rights and obligations, etc. The third, the second step is to work out what are the performance obligations. So what is it that we're promising as LC? What are we promising to our customer in terms of goods and services? So there's two distinct performance obligations. So remember, the concept of distinctiveness is really important when it comes to performance obligations. So our distinct performance obligations are the phone itself. So we're giving a phone and then we're also going to deliver network services for two years. OK, so we're happy we've got our distinct performance obligations. The third step would be to work out what the transaction price is. So in this situation, it's pretty easy. OK, we don't need to worry about, you know, um, the time value of money, we don't need to worry about any variable considerations, we don't need to worry about any non-cash considerations, etc. This customer, through a debit order, will be giving us 300 rands per month for 24 months. Okay, so our transaction price is pretty easy, 7,200 rand. The fourth step of the five-step model would then say, we need to allocate this transaction price to the performance obligation. So we need to allocate the 7,200 to the mobile phone and to the network services, okay? Now, we've got our performance obligations here, and we also have what the standalone selling prices are for these performance obligations. So as we see in the example, the handset will be sold without um, the network services is sold for actually 5,000 rands, okay? So that is basically the cash price for this handset. So that's the standalone selling price. And that is taken from observable selling prices. We don't actually need to estimate that. Then the standalone selling price of the network services will be 4,800, which is 200 rands times 24 months. Okay, so they told us that if you don't buy, if you don't, if you just buy the network services by themselves, the 200 deal, you pay 200 rands per month. So that's times 24 is 4,800. So in terms of percentage wise, 51% of the revenue needs to then be allocated to the handset. Okay. And then 49% needs to be allocated to the network services. So that gives you revenue that should be allocated to the handset of 3673 and revenue that needs to be allocated to the network services of 3527. And that gives you a total of the 7,200. So now you've actually allocated this transaction price to the different performance obligations. The fifth step is then recognizing revenue when or as the performance obligations are satisfied. So with the cell phone, okay, when do you actually satisfy that performance obligation? You satisfy it on delivery. Once you deliver the cell phone to the customer, they now have control over the cell phone. You've actually satisfied that performance obligation. And this is an example of a performance obligation being satisfied at a point in time. At that point in time where delivery takes place and control is transferred, you recognize revenue of 3673. Now with the network services, this is an example of a performance obligation that you satisfy over time. So you're providing network services for 24 months. So every month, as you provide those network services, you recognize one out of 24 of 3,527 rands. Okay, so that will be the revenue, one twenty-fourth of that amount will be the revenue that you recognize on a monthly basis. So this is an example, and hopefully you can see how to actually apply the five-step revenue model. 